Hello, and welcome to this lesson on cylindrical coordinates. Now, in our day-to-day -day sort of mathematical engineering labs, we're really comfortable working in rectangular coordinates, x, y, and z, right? This is what we've been working with since elementary school, where it's comfortable, it's home for us. We really like to be there. We'd rather stay there if we, if we can get away with it. But as it turns out, um, there are a lot of problems, especially in electromagnetism, that are much easier to solve if we convert to a different coordinate system. So in this lesson, we're going to bite the bullet. We're going to get into how to do conversions in cylindrical coordinates. In the next lesson, we'll talk about spherical coordinates. But for now, we're going to focus on cylindrical coordinates. So the first thing we want to talk about is just how do we represent points, those point coordinates in cylindrical space. Let's start by bringing back our rectangular coordinate system. Got our x-axis, our y-axis, we've got our z-axis. Let's so label those x, y, and z. And if we have a point p, we've already been working with them as a point that is in x, y, and z. Right. So that point might be up here. That's some place in Y and X, and then it comes up to some point in Z, X, Y. So let's take this, let's bring it over here, and let's convert it to cylindrical. Now the way cylindrical works is, is an angle theta. If we imagine a circle coming out from the X axis, some line there, that angle we're going to call theta. Then we'll also have the distance from the z-axis to the point, the radius of the circle. We're going to use the Greek symbol rho to represent that. And then, conveniently, inside cylindrical coordinates, we actually keep the z-axis the same just the way it is. So that's basically the gist. We're some distance away from the z-axis, we're some height above the xy plane, and then we're some angle away from the x-axis, and that's our theta. So we can rewrite our p of x, y, z as p of rho theta z. Now let's talk about how to do some transformations. How do we get from x, y, z to rho theta z? We call these our point transformations. So if we're starting with rectangular, if we want to get to rectangular, we'll say that x is equal to rho times the cosine of theta, y is equal to rho times the sine of theta, and conveniently z is just equal to z. On the cylindrical side, we've got that rho is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Remember that rho, since the radius of that circle, must be greater than or equal to zero. Theta is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. And z is just equal to z. Let's talk real quick about this tangent, inverse tangent of y equals x. It gets us the coordinate theta. So let's call this a note about theta. And the note here is that you need to pay attention to the signs of x and y when calculating theta. And so what do we mean by that? Let's say that we have Look at top down, down the z axis, we got x and y. So our x axis, we got our y axis. And say that we've got two points. We've got a point at, let's say, negative 3 and 4. So that's going to be somewhere like there. That's point P. And let's say we have another point. Well, Q at 3 and negative 4. Now, in both cases, 
you're going to compute that theta equals the inverse tangent of negative 4 over 3 In both cases, you're going to get it's minus 53.13 degrees. So in both cases, you get the same result, minus 53.13 degrees, minus 53.13 degrees. But by observing here on the graph, that it's obvious that they're not at the same place. So you need to pay attention to the signs and make sure the correct angles because it's going to give you the angle off of the x-axis, right? So for P, we need to actually set it equal to 180 minus 53.13 degrees, which gets us 126.87 degrees. And over here, we need to do 360 minus 53.13 degrees, which gets us 306, 87 degrees. So when converting and finding out what your theta is, make sure you're paying attention to what the signs of x and y are, so you make sure you get the right results. Remember, we're going to take all of our angles off of the positive x axis. Moving on, that's how we get our scalar transformations, right, our point uh, coordinate transformations. Now let's take a look at how we convert our vector transformations. How do we get vectors in cylindrical coordinates? So we'll call this vector transformations. All right, so here's what we want to do. We want to take a vector A that we already have is equal to what we've been working with already ax times the unit vector a sub x plus a y times the unit vector a sub y plus a z times the unit vector a sub z. And we want to convert that to a vector a that's equal to a rho times the unit vector a sub rho plus a theta times the unit vector a sub theta plus a z times the unit vector a sub z. Now remember the dot product. And one of the things that we talked about with the dot product is that it gives us the vector component in an arbitrary direction. So if we want to know the component of A in the direction of rho, all we need to do is do A dot the unit vector A sub rho. Or if we want to do theta, that's A, the vector A dot the unit vector A sub theta. And then of course, AZ is just equal to a Z. We like Z. It's nice. It stays in the same place. So let's take a deeper look at converting these dot products. So if we have A times the unit vector A sub rho, or excuse me, dot the unit vector A sub rho, this is going to equal to A X times the unit vector A sub X dotted with the unit vector A sub rho plus the Y component times the unit vector a sub y dotted with the unit vector a sub rho. So we have each of these components dotted with the unit vector for what we're trying to get. Same thing for a and a dot. a sub theta gets us a sub x times the unit vector a sub x dotted with a sub rho plus a sub y times the unit vector a sub y dotted with a sub theta. Oop, that should have been a sub theta back there.
Now, how do we do these dot products? Well, there's nothing to do except convert it to a memory. So we'll create a little chart here. Call this the dot products of unit vectors. So on the left-hand side here, let's have a sub x dot a sub y dot a sub z dot. And on top, let's do a sub rho, a sub theta, and a sub z. So if we take a sub x dot a sub rho, that's just going to be equal to cosine of theta. a sub x dotted with a sub theta is negative sine theta. And a sub x dotted with a sub z, since we're orthogonal, is just equal to zero. Now a sub y dotted with a sub rho is equal to the sine of theta. And a sub y dotted with a sub theta is equal to the cosine of theta. a sub y dotted with a sub z is equal to zero. Now, a sub z dotted with a sub rho, since the orthogonal is equal to zero, dotted with a sub theta is equal to zero, and then a sub z dotted with itself is just equal to one. So this table we need to convert to memory so that we can use it in our transformations. So, Let's go ahead and work out an example of performing one of these transformations. So let's say we have a vector field B. And it's equal to Y times the unit vector A sub X minus X times the unit vector A sub Y plus Z times the unit vector A sub Z. And now we want to convert it to cylindrical coordinates. So the first thing we'll do is let's find our component B sub rho. And we know that's equal to the x component Bx times the unit vector A sub x dotted with the unit vector A sub rho plus the B component times the unit vector A sub y dotted with the unit vector a sub rho. Now let's go ahead and grab some of these values. b of x we see is equal to y times, now a sub x dotted with a sub rho we see from our chart here is equal to cosine of theta. Plus b sub y which is equal to negative x times a sub y dot a sub rho, a sub y dot a sub rho is equal to the sine of theta. So we've done our dot products, now we just need to lose these x and y components. Now we go up and find our point transformations all the way up at the top. Remember x was equal to rho times cosine, y is equal to rho times sine. So we go and we make those substitutions and we'll get that b sub rho is equal to rho times the sine of theta times cosine theta minus rho times cosine theta times sine of theta. And we see that these are identical to each other, right? So that means that b sub rho, our component vector or vector component of b in the direction of rho is just equal to zero, so there's nothing there. So now let's do b sub theta, and that's going to be equal to the x component times unit vector a sub x dotted with a sub theta plus b sub y times the unit vector a sub y dotted with a sub theta. Now b of x we've already seen is equal to y, a sub x dotted with a sub theta is equal to negative sine of theta. By is equal to negative x, so we'll say negative x times a sub y dot a sub theta is equal to um, cosine of theta. Now, just like before, we substitute our y and x y is equal to 
rho times the sine of theta. We have that times negative sine of theta minus rho times cosine theta times cosine of theta. All that's left to do here is just some algebraic simplification. So we have minus rho times sine squared theta minus rho times cosine squared theta, which we can use the distributive property to factor out minus rho. So that'd be minus rho times sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, which we know that guy is equal to one. So we found that the component B of theta is equal to negative rho. And finally, the component Z is just equal to the component Z, which was equal to, what was it? That was just equal to Z. So after all of that, we found that our new vector field B in cylindrical coordinates is just equal to minus rho times a sub theta plus z times a sub z. So there we go. Maybe kind of an overwhelming process, but once we take it down and break it down one step at a time, there's really not that much to it. That's how we convert from rectangular coordinates to cylindrical coordinates. And as we'll see, cylindrical coordinates will make a lot of our work much, much easier um, once we get into the, the real stuff. So if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next lesson where we'll talk about cylindrical coordinates. Thank you.